Hey guys and welcome to this video on distance time equations and graphs. In this video we're talking all about distance and time. So the first thing we're going to look at is the relationship between speed, distance and time in an equation. The next thing we're going to look at are distance time graphs and finally we're going to learn how to use these things to answer exam questions. So first off what is the relationship between speed, distance and time? And to show this we've got our friend here Hank. So let's say we have Hank here and he's starting in this position. He then moves across the screen to here and we'll say that he's traveled 10 meters and it's taken him one second. If I ask you how fast is Hank going you'll say well he covered 10 meters every second because it's been one second and he's traveled 10 meters. Another way of saying this is that Hank has traveled 10 meters per second and from another video you'll know that this is a speed. So there's a relationship between speed, distance and time and that relationship is right here. We have V which is speed equals the distance over time. And you'll see these little triangles here. Don't worry about them for now. For those of you interested, it simply means change in, but it's not important at this level. So all this equation is saying is how far has Hank run in meters from where he started to where he is now? How long has Hank been running for? And therefore we can work out how fast Hank is going. So working out how many meters he's covered, how many seconds this has been, gives us our speed in meters every second. And so to answer this question, it's pretty easy. You just put in the number for distance, which is 10 meters. You put in the number for time, which is one second. And you go 10 divided by one is 10 meters per second, which is our speed. So what you can see here is doing it in words and doing it using the equation gave us the exact same answer because this formula is exactly the same as doing it in words. The reason we use the formula is if the numbers get more complicated, things get confusing. So say Hank had run 272 meters in 11.4 seconds. You can't work that out in your head, but you can work it out using this formula. However, they don't often give you word questions on this, simply because it's a little easy for your level. Instead, what they'll give you are these distance time graphs, which is plotting distance on the vertical axis against time on the horizontal axis. All distance means is how far has Hank traveled from where he started. So if the distance is four, it means he's four meters away from where he started. If the distance is seven, it means he's seven meters away from where he started. And all time is saying is how long have we been timing Hank for? So a four on this axis just means we've been timing Hank for four seconds. A time of 12 means we've been timing him for 12 seconds. Now before we go into more detail explaining these lines, I want you to check one thing in your exam questions before you do your answer. Please check it actually says distance on the vertical axis. If it says speed here instead of distance, it is not a distance time graph, it is a speed time graph, which we'll cover in another video. Don't answer it like it's a distance time graph or you will get the question wrong. So that's always the first step when doing these questions is to check that it says distance on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis. Now that we've done the basics of distance time graphs, we're going to explain what each of the lines mean. And to do that, again, we're going to use our friend Hank. And Hank starts at his kennel, which we can see here. So when we start the timer, Hank's at his kennel, so he hasn't traveled any distance from his kennel, and we've just started the timer, so it's at zero seconds. So we start the timer, and over the first four seconds, Hank travels from here to here. So it's been four seconds, and Hank has traveled four meters. He's now four meters away from where he started. And so on the graph, it is represented by this line. So we can see here, Hank's gone to four meters away from his kennel in the first four seconds. So that's all that's happening here. The take home message is that when a line is going upwards, an object is getting further away from where it started. So in this case, Hank is getting further away from the kennel. In the next four seconds, Hank actually comes back closer to the kennel, which is shown by this line here. So we can see Hank was four meters away from the kennel, He's come back to being two meters away from the kennel and it's taken him four seconds. So between four and eight seconds to do this. So we can see that if a line is sloping downwards, it's saying that the object is coming closer to where it started. So Hank's coming back to his kennel. Now using the information that we've learned, I want you to try and think about what's gonna happen between eight and 10 seconds. So on this line here. So pause the video, have a think about it and then play it again and I'll reveal the answer. So hopefully you had a chance to think about that and now I'll show you what the answer is. So from earlier, I mentioned that if a line is going upwards, the object is getting further away from its home. This line is going upwards. And in fact, Hank has traveled from two meters away from his kennel 
all the way to 8 metres away from his kennel. So he's travelled 6 metres further away from his kennel. And in total, he's now 8 metres away from it. And how long did it take him to do this? This is a 2 second period to travel this distance. Now what happens when the line goes flat? Well, when the line goes flat, Hank's actually not moving at all. So if you think about it, Hank was 8 metres away, and then 6 seconds later, he's still 8 metres away from his kennel. He hasn't gone further away from it, but he hasn't come closer either. He's just been standing still for 6 seconds. So a flat line means that the object is staying still. So that's our summary. If the line is going upwards, like this one here, and this one here, the object, in this case Hank, is getting further away from where it started. If the line is going downwards, like this one here, the object is getting closer to where it started. And if the line is flat, like this one here, the object is staying still. So it's not getting further away, but it's not getting closer either. So let's have a look at some common exam questions they'd like to ask about these graphs. So first off, calculate how far Hank was away from his kennel after 6 seconds. So all you need to do here is go along the horizontal axis to 6 seconds and draw a line. Where this line hits the graph tells you exactly where Hank was. So this is where Hank was after 6 seconds. Then all you need to do is draw a horizontal line across the distance to work out how far he is away from where he started. And we know that he started at his kennel. So the answer here is that Hank is 3 metres away from his kennel. And hopefully you understand how we got that. A common explain type question is explaining Hank's journey over the first 10 seconds or the first amount of time. And to do this, all you need to do is break it down line by line. So to start with, you want to draw a line at 10 seconds because you don't want to explain parts of the graph that you haven't been asked about. So if I draw a line at 10 seconds, you can see that we're talking about everything left of this line. So between when he started at his kennel all the way up to 10 seconds. So first off, we'd say that Hank travelled 4 metres away from his kennel over the first 4 seconds. How do I know that? Well, I can see on this graph that he's gone 4 metres from where he started, and it's taken him 4 seconds to do it. So we can see this is what Hank has done. Then we talk about the next line. So we can see here that Hank was 4 metres away from his kennel, and then he comes back to being only 2 metres away from his kennel. And it takes him from 4 to 8 seconds to do this. And so we can say that he travelled back 2 metres in the next 4 seconds. And then finally, we need to talk about what happens here. So overall, Hank was 2 metres away from his kennel, and then 2 seconds later, he was 8 metres away from his kennel. Which means he's travelled 6 metres further away in the next 2 seconds. So you can see this happens here. And then to cap it off and get full marks, you might want to describe where he is right at the end. So you might say that Hank is 8 metres away from his kennel. So what do you need to know from this video? Well first off, you need to know the DT equation. Remember the triangle means change in, but you don't need to worry about that for level 1. The next thing you need to do is always check that you have distance on the vertical axis. And finally, the summary of what you need to know is that if there is a line going upwards, the object is getting further away from where it started. A line sloping downwards means it's getting closer to where it started, and a flat line means it's not getting further away, it's not getting closer, it is standing still. In another video, we're going to talk about the slightly more complex skills for DT graphs. So if you're interested in getting those high marks, go and watch that one. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in another video.